There are three levels that are under the regulation of the periodicity of 14 and its division into 1,000. Those three levels are the spiritual development of man, the intellectual development, and the body. The body is verified by the seven meridians that run down the front of the body. If we turn this figure around, there are seven more down the back for a total of 14. 14 for the body, 14 for the mind, and 14 for the spirit. This number is also an aspect of the Manvantara. It takes 14 Manvantaras to make up a single Kalpa, or one day of Brahma. If we look back to the relationship of the palm and the four digits being the measure through which we construct the whole figure of man, we can determine that the cerebral cortex has a digit value of 0.7305. If you multiply that number by two, you get 1.461. Removing the decimal point, this, in years, is the exact cycle of Sirius, which is 1,461 years, that is how long it takes Sirius to complete one cycle. If you multiply 0 0.7305 by 50, you get 36.525. Move the decimal one place to the right, and you have the exact time and days it takes for the Earth to complete one solar cycle, 365.25 days. We are beginning to acknowledge our connection to Sirius, and it's spelled out in the width of the finger, which is the basic unit of measure chosen by Egyptian culture, who were the first people to record the movement and relationship between the sun and Sirius. It is all spelled out in the hand of man. There's an Egyptian wall painting of the death of Osiris. He is encircled by a serpent. On his body are black and white checks, of which there are 28. Osiris is the human form that lives and develops through a sevenfold, fourteenfold system and goes through stages as a species of death and rebirth of his formation. The numerology of seven and fourteen is also present with Egyptian images of Osiris. Mythologically, Osiris represents the human species. He is the deity which represents the entirety of our species. In this Egyptian image, we see a deceased Osiris that represents the end of the human species. From him, 28 shoots of wheat germinate, representing a new seeding. These are being watered by a man with a vase, which is the symbol of Aquarius, the same symbols for the zodiac still being used today. Osiris lays on a platform, which has five onks and 10 wasp scepters. The wasp is a staff with a dog's head, which very often symbolizes the dog star. It also symbolizes Anubis, the guardian of the gateway to the dead. The Ankh is the symbol of life and the reunification of life. There are 15 symbols in total, if you add the five Ankhs with the 10 wasp scepters. This symbolizes Osiris going through the death of one phase of our species and a process of time. It is suggested in the Puranas concerning the Yugas that the human species is manifest for a period of 60,000 years. Then that manifest stage goes into a dormancy, a sort of mummification, where the energy for another round of its development requires another 60,000 years. It will also take 60,000 years for the Earth to rejuvenate itself. Here is another image of Osiris that continues our mythological investigation, which we are using as a key to interpret the duration of the Yuga. It is a depiction of a philosophy that is called the Lion's Path. It is an initiatory process of going through 14 stages of initiation. The lion's path is a metaphor for the 14 levels of energy that each soul is believed to pass through as it approaches its incarnation on Earth. It passes through them again after death and during post-mortem. Each one of those 14 levels is a passage through a particular vibration which emanates from a constellation, a star, or a planetary vibration. The star which imparts vibration to the development of the human soul and its sentient incarnation is the star Sirius. Then there are 13 planets. 
The first is one that is questioned in our time, resides beyond the orbit of Pluto, which we will call Vulcan, the invisible planet. Then we have Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, and Chiron, which are all part of the breakup of a previous planet. Next is Saturn, Jupiter, Xerxes, Mars, the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and the Moon. All of these represent the 14 levels of vibration which contribute to the formation of human consciousness. They are called the 14 amulets of Osiris, and those energies are gathered up in a particular proportion for each individual birth, and they are dispersed back to the previous level upon the soul's journey out. There are three dimensions of space and three durations of time. In other words, everything that enters into the manifest world must adhere to the law of three. There is no such thing in the physical world as two dimensions. Everything in the physical manifestation has height, width, and a thickness. No matter how thin that thickness may be, there is nothing that does not have thickness. This is the prerequisite of the manifest world. We symbolize a two-dimensional world with drawings, and we think about it so we can conceive of a two-dimensional reality. It exists, but for it to manifest, it must be 3D and must have a time duration of either beginning, middle, and end, or before, during, and after. These are the three dimensions of time. These are the prerequisites. That's how our life is arranged. This is the requirement. Three dimensions and three durations is the requirement of a manifest being. That is the difference between existence and manifestation. There are things that exist that are unmanifest. Pythagoras specified that in terms of the world of number, there are whole numbers belonging to the manifest world and the world of irrational numbers that is a world of unresolvable continual decimals. Remember, all the roots of the key numbers are irrational. They exist, they have an existence, but they do not have a manifestation. They exist only in the mind. The mind conceives in the two-dimensional world, and it perceives in the three-dimensional world. This is very important to understand about the way we think, because we must make that differentiation, what really exists and what is actually manifest. Three dimensions plus duration creates a fourfold reality, and that is the nature of the manifest world, the number four. That's the division you have to have in the manifest world, four directions or orientations because it's occurring in both space and time. The square root of three is 1.72, and then it goes on infinitely. It's not perceivable. It's not reducible to whole numbers. Three is, its root isn't. Very often, all the key formative numbers of sound and embodiment have an irrational root that it belongs to. Everything in manifestation adheres to the law of before and after. In other words, it's implicit in the three durations. This is the idea of death. Something begins and something ends. The purely existent world does not have a beginning or an ending. No matter whatever happens, wherever there is a manifestation of three of anything, it has a root that will exist forever. In Indian philosophy, they associate the existent level as being the domain of time, while the manifest level requires a space, a spatial location. For space to be manifest, for it to be a determined space, it needs to adhere to four directions. Space has the requirements of back and front, left and right, top and bottom, and most importantly, with space, you always have an inside and an outside. Once you fulfill those requirements, you're in a manifest world Space's domain is the manifest, and time, which is something that we measure, but we never really know what it is, exists. You can imagine a realm that is not manifest, but exists, but you cannot imagine a manifestation that does not pre-exist or have its elements pre-exist. That's why the Yuga system is the primary teaching found in India. They do not give a hierarchical priority to time and space, but they give it a successional priority, Time and the structuring of time must occur before there's any structuring in space. One of the key phrases in the Puranas is, 
Only that which has a manifest existence has a space which also exists. We separate ourselves from our space and we call it the ecology. What's good or bad for the environment is directly good or bad for us. We suffer every pollution and every disturbance found in the environment. Every destruction that is inflicted on the environment we experience in the physiology and metabolism of the body. Now let's do a little more number workings with 6,408. We have looked at the division of 6,408 by 7, which is 864. So right away, we are into that progression of numbers that we began to talk about in the first episode. 2,160 is the moon's diameter in miles, and half of that is 1,080, and half of that is 540. All significant measures and units in the size of the Earth, the Moon, and in time begin with 27. 27 is 3 cubed. So that is the triadic nature of time and space when it takes on a volume and enters the physical world. It generates the numbers which control the time and space formations. If we take all these numbers and simply switch the zero around, 2160 becomes 2016. 4,320 becomes 4,032, and 8,640 becomes 8,064. All of these numbers exist in a ratio of 14 to 15. 2,016 over 14 equals 144. 2,160 over 15 equals 144. 4,032 over 14 equals 288. 4,320 over 15 equals 288. 8,064 over 14 equals 576. 8,640 over 15 equals 576. In John Michel and Robin Heath's study of Stonehenge, they found that the thickness of the stones in the outer circle compared to the inner circle has a ratio of 15 to 14. Just so we don't feel that this is coincidental, if we divide 6048 by 9, you get 672, and then by 2, you get 336. 336 equals exactly 6 times 56, and 56 is the number of holes found at the Aubrey Circle at Stonehenge. So it begins to become doubtless. Then there's a megalithic measure that places these 56 holes so that they are 108 megalithic units apart. 56 times 108 equals 6,048. It's the duration of the Kali Yuga. All these key dimensions of 108 go back to 54, which is 2 times 3 cubed. As we showed with the palm of the hand, our entire perceiving, hearing, and articulation process occurs in the first four palms. There is research that recognized that the human voice can differentiate exactly 54 different tones. The human speaking and articulating structure can enunciate exactly 54 phonemes or sounds. Our speech and our hearing are all keyed into the dimensions and movements of the earth. They are extensions of the same power inherent in these numbers. Twice the three levels of existence cubed made manifest. Whenever you get a cube, that's the manifest world. 54 to 56 is 27 to 28. It's all built into Stonehenge. Its builders knew enough of how to symbolically set up all of the stones in these relationships. It's as if the astronomical events dictated the architectural choices not the other way. They didn't build it in order to observe it. It's like they knew it, and that allowed them to know how to build it. Because you couldn't set up an observatory like that unless you knew what you wanted to observe. You didn't set it up and discover, oh, the sun sets here, so we put the rocks here. To move those rocks from that distance and not know exactly what they wanted to count is preposterous, because they wanted to know where they were in time, not what time it was. That was already known. It is through the understanding of these sacred numbers 
that we began to know how the universe came into existence and manifested itself.